What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are working on this immaculate Audi SQ5. We're going to be changing the factory MMI screen to the new 10.1 inch Android display. So we'll go through the full install and then we'll look at all the features that it has, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, all that stuff uh, will be later on. So without further ado, let's jump into it. All right guys, in the kit, we have the screen itself. Connectors on the back, we'll go through all of that. We've got the mounting hardware. Okay, so that's the new sort of fascia that goes around the screen with a new hazard light switch. All of the wiring, which will go through inside the car. Most of this is plug and play, so it's not that daunting. Some more hardware for the screen. There's some screws right there for the screen. Pretty straightforward for what's in the box. Uh, but now we can jump in the car and start pulling it apart. All right guys, first part of the install is removing this section here. So what we will use, plastic panel tool removers to pry around this panel here and it will pull out. And there's a little button on this hazard light switch. A little button. And then there's a little uh, plug on this hazard light switch. And then we'll have some screws to remove the screen. And on this side here, we have the main radio module right here. That gets removed with these two Audi radio removal keys. And what you want to do is turn the ignition on and move this gear selector out of the way so uh, this, the bottom of this doesn't hit the top of that. Um, and just make sure you park brakes on so the car doesn't roll. Once that's out, you can remove the keys by pressing on these little silver tabs right here and pulling back on the key. All right, once those things are out, the last thing for removal is the glove box. So let's take a look at that. Okay, glove box removal is pretty simple. You're gonna remove this panel, okay, like so. You can pop it off. There's a screw here. It's either gonna be an eight mil or a T25, depending on what year model your car is. There'll be two more underneath the glove box. So one there, one on the other side. There's gonna be three more right here. So on the inside of the glove box there, and maybe one more behind that. So you'll have to pull this out. That just pulls out very easily. There's two tabs on either side. They're sort of built into the carpet, but you can see them. Pull the tabs, pull that out. There might be one more screw there. All right, once all that is removed, put the screws somewhere safe and there'll be a couple of plugs here. There'll be one on the bottom there of the glove box and there might be this if you have AMI. That runs into the glove box. Um, so also when you're purchasing, if, you, if it says with AMI, that's this plug that's in the side of the glove box. You'll see it on the inside. One thing that we need here is that. So that's the can junction there. All right, this is all the wiring that was in the package. So well, let's have a look at each thing. Right here, so this is our screen connection. It also has the USB inputs on it. So that's gonna come up here, sit right there, plug into the new screen. And you've got an LVDS connection there for screen input right here. There's a microphone input as well. And then there's a couple of other, looks like two LVDS outputs, which we're not gonna need. So you can tape those up. And on the other end, you're left with two USBs. Now you can run these into the glove box if you want. So from there, across over to the glovey, run them down by the side of the dash. Some people have it sticking out right here underneath the climate. That's very, this just pulls out very easily. Uh, completely up to you what you want to do with the USBs, okay? I've already run, we've done a flush mount in the center console here and we've run the USB mail right there. So we're going to do one. The main USB, which is USB one, is going to go to that. And then the secondary will just run into the glove box because you'll probably never use it or you know, you might use it, but. GPS antenna. I've had people ask me if you can use the factory GPS antenna. And though the plug is, no, never mind, it's completely different, it won't work. If the plug was the same, even still, it's sort of short. So you'd have to run it back up to here and it would just be more unnecessary work. You'd rather keep the genuine system plugged in as normal and then just run your new GPS antenna. What I would do with that is up in here behind the dash, nice and high, there's a metal plate right there. Stick it down and then just have your wiring coming through. You can plug right into the screen. Now there's an audio out here. So there's certain things here that are not necessary in every install. So for example, this car, not gonna need it. You can chuck that on the floor. Okay, this is a Wi-Fi antenna. This is for your wireless car play. Um, same thing, I'm gonna have it mounted right on this channel here probably. So it's nice and high in the dash. It's still hidden. It can be hidden, okay? It doesn't need to sit here right in your face. Um, get it mounted up there like that, boom out of the way, plug that into the Wi-Fi 
uh, port of our screen. Hazard light switch. That's just a plug and play connector for the hazard light. Nice and easy. Boom, boom, then we've got the bulk. So here is an external, on this main white harness, that's an external speaker. Not sure if it's needed. Um, we've done a few of these installs now and I don't add it. Um, and yeah, it's not needed. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. Maybe in certain applications it is needed. Um, we've done a lot of 3G MMI cars like this. It was not needed in a 3G MMI car. Then you've got a harness that looks somewhat like this. So what that's going to do is plug and play. So we're going to go boom into the factory quad lock. And then that's going to go into the MMI module afterwards. Now on this part of the harness, we've got an audio input, which is already plugged in. And that will just probably line up with the AUX input. There's also this MOST audio input, which I think is not needed. I think that might be a separate part for maybe a different sort of add-on. Um, because though, yes, the amp is uh, fiber optic, uh, we still use a analog connection here for AUX. So it is plugged in hardwired, so you just tape that up nice and tight and it will be fine. Sound comes through great. I get a lot of people asking about sound. Uh, sound is fine. It sounds good. This has got the Bang & Olufsen sound system. It'll sound great. Bottom of your quad lock, there's a little pin. Pull it back, like so. Line up your pins. So what I do is I usually look at the bottom there in the bottom row, there's a bunch of pins, bunch of pins at the bottom. It'll only go one way, but it makes it easy. You can just line it up, push it in, close the lock, done. Now what we need to do, tape this stuff up nicely. And then this part here is gonna run to the, on a, on a right hand drive car, the left side here where we, uh, where we removed the glove box and the red thing, CAN bus junction I showed you before, that's a T harness for that. So we've run our CAN junction cable over to here. I'll show you where that gets plugged in. That's our main audio plug. So that's just gonna go up here through the inside of the dash up to here and then in behind the screen. And I'll show you all the external stuff once we get up there. Then what you need to do is tidy this up. So we've got our quad lock. Make sure you fish out all the plugs. And then when you start plugging in the, the, uh, the main radio module again, what you need to do is get this quad lock connector, the plug and play part, and fish it in and down behind the climate control. Otherwise it's gonna get in the way of sliding back your radio module. Once you get it in, right, and you've fished around just like I was doing, you'll notice this is gonna go back pretty much three quarters of the way without much pressure. And I'm just stopping it right there just in case we need to unplug it, but that'll push in and click in pretty much after that. Um, if you're struggling with getting that plug in underneath, you can remove the climate control, just pop straight back, um, and then you can feed it down behind the climate and then plug it back and pop it back in, nice and easy. Speaker cable, I'm gonna leave down here, just bundle it up, tape it up nicely to one of the looms, that's done. This is very easy to run up behind here. You can see my hand right there, just straight up behind, easy. Um, on the plug, you've well on the main harness here, you've got a few inputs here if you want to use them. AUX input, left and right. Camera detection, if you want to add a reverse camera. Automatic camera 12 volt output, if you want to add a reverse camera. Then you've got the reverse camera in. Another video input here, if you want to use, let your imagination run wild, I've said that many times, just you can run another video to it. And there's also an accessory input here if you want to run an external accessories. All that stuff we do not need, so we're just going to tape it up and bundle it back behind that part of the screen. And what I've done with those bundles is just pull them through to here. And what I'm gonna do is collect them all together, like so. And there's a loom right there, factory loom. You put a zip tie around it so they don't go anywhere. The old um, power cable for the screen is not used, so we're gonna tape that up. Okay, now the last plug you'll have left 
is going to go in there. Make sure you've checked all the pins, okay? So if something doesn't work, the car we had a customer whose car wasn't starting, uh, that just wasn't plugged in properly, okay? Make sure that's in. Then we've got the two USBs. So this one here is going to run over into the glovey. And that one there we've got connected to our factory, or, well, our flush mount that we did, which is right there. So I'll get all this wiring neatened up, and then we'll look at mounting the screen. And one of the last plugs is our hazard light plug right there. So that goes there, it gives you a factory plug and it gives you the one for the new fascia. All right, this is gonna mount that way like so, and you've gotta run your wiring through. So what I would do is grab the screen, look at what plugs are on each side, and then run the plugs through. So if the screen sits like that, on this side here, we've got 4G Wi-Fi antenna, and we've got the main power harness, and then the other side is the GPS. So that's easy. So once you got those plugs run, you can use the factory mounting hardware to mount this plate. So I guess before we go too far, it's good to test. What we can do is, I guess, plug it in. Just make sure we get something. Good sign. Nice. Beautiful. Good to know. Everything seems to be all right. So we'll get it mounted and we'll play with it a bit more. One thing to note, or we'll keep, Remember, the gold one here, the gold plug, that was for the GPS antenna, and the silver one's for the 4G or your, your Wi-Fi antenna, okay? So just make sure you remember them, don't get them ass about. Same thing, we're gonna run the same plugs through the same holes, and then we've got one, two, three, four screws, and you've got one, two, three, four screws, small ones in your little mounting hardware packet. Okay, so plug in your little hazard light switch, test it, beautiful. You can tape up the other plug and the main plug and feed that away. Look at that. That is in looking great. Okay, there's another three here. You only need two of them. These little tabs open up. You can just peel them open with your nail or use a pick. Just so you know, on the side there, you've got the 4G. Um, you can put a 4G SIM card in there. So if you've got a... Yeah, you can put a 4G SIM card right there and you can put a... SD card storage right there. So what I'm doing here is feeding the wiring back so that I can let the mount click in. And boom, look at that. So you can see there's a foot right there and a foot right there. And they sort of go in and down on the feet. And then if you pull back on the unit, it won't go anywhere. And then you just nip it up with the two screws at the top. There's also another foot in the middle. So make sure you get that too. All right, there it is, guys. So before we go too far, we'll do some testing. All right, so what we can do is go maybe reverse. See if we get an image, no image, okay. So first thing doesn't work. What do we need to do to fix that? Get out of park. We're gonna go settings. System settings. Camera. OEM camera, okay. We go home. Let's try that again. Look at that. Camera. Okay, now we're just gonna press park because I'm still, because the car's not actually driving, so we'll just get out of that. Um, obviously you've got full connectivity with the factory systems in the car. Okay, so they just work just as they were before. But the screen's obviously smaller because the factory screen was smaller. So we go radio got sound. Alright, what I'm going to do now is just get the glove box back in um, and then we'll go through a full in-depth look at the screen and how it all works. Alright guys, this is the screen in action. So, let's go all the way to navigation. So from navigation, you've got Bluetooth. Okay, if we go into Bluetooth now, what I'll do is you're going to see here the Go CSDK. I'm just going to grab my phone. We're going to pair to it. So put in the password. It'll connect. Okay, now it says it's connected on my phone. Then we can go home. Applications. Z-Link. It says connecting now because I've paired to Bluetooth. Use CarPlay. Give it a second to connect. And then boom, wireless CarPlay. Boots up just like that. Okay, so. Takes up the whole screen and it looks fantastic. We can go Spotify here, see if we can go find something to play. Okay, we got no sound, 
So what we're gonna do, let's go to home. Scroll from the top, home. We're gonna go car. That's gonna bring us back to the Audi screen. We're gonna go media. We're gonna go external input. Boom, okay. So what I did, I had to plug in the little AMI connector in the glove box, okay? By the way, if you press any button on the MMI system, it's gonna flick you back to the MMI, which is normal. We go source. External audio was available for me to click, however, there was still no sound. I had to go in and plug in the little plug, which you just saw in the clip, okay? Get back to Android, tap the screen. Now we're in Android. So, as you saw there, that was CarPlay. Okay, you can go here, we can go back, back. Um, what are all these? I didn't even listen to that. Okay, so listening to, to a Joe Rogan podcast, we can go here, let's listen to how it sounds. Noticeable, the demeanor that I go into the cage with, it's it's noticeable in my brain too. Like sounds great, it. sounds good. Okay. Then we can go home, back into apps. What else you have here? We've got a settings tab. So you can go through and change all the Android settings if you wish. Okay, you can go here. Um, also, I'm pressing home every time. You can just press the back button if you want to go back one page. Play Store. So, if we went into settings, we could go up to network. We could go turn the Wi-Fi on. We can then get the hotspot up on our phone. Okay, so I could go hotspot on. Connect to the hotspot so the screen has internet access. Then we can go, I oh, went the wrong button. Then we can go into Play Store and you can let your imagination run wild and download all sorts of crazy apps. And then you got, so there's Equalizer, there's Google Maps, Google Chrome. You can download Waze Maps or you can just use Waze through CarPlay. Um, there's a bunch of things you can do, okay? You could, limitless options. So YouTube and Netflix will probably be your big two if you want to go ahead and download those. Uh, navigation, Bluetooth, music, so this is all stuff that you can store. Uh, music you can store on the screen, same as video. Dash is pretty cool. So that shows you real-time information right here. So you've got your revs there, the car's running. Uh, when you start driving, obviously it'll show you the speed as well and you can change the color there. System settings for anyone that wants to know. Okay, so what do these screens come with? Four gigabytes of RAM, 64 gig storage, version 10 uh, for Android. All right guys, so that is a quick rundown on how the whole thing works. Um, most of the things like the reverse camera didn't work. We just had to go settings, system settings, and from factory, camera was on aftermarket. This car has a factory camera, we just changed it to OEM, okay? Apart from that, system's ready to go, it works. Um, CarPlay looks great. That's probably the coolest thing. I'm going to get some photos of that. Boom, you look at that. That is just crazy. That looks so, so good. Okay, this is how it looks in the dash. And now that we know that it all works, put our radio module back in. I'm going to clean this whole area up, get some photos, um, and that we are all done. Guys, that is the job done. As you've seen, it was very, very straightforward, pretty easy. Um, in terms of install, I think many of you can DIY it if you're watching the video, wondering if you can DIY it, you probably can. You just need the right tools, so make sure you've got some tape, make sure you've got some um, Audi radio removal keys, you don't need to solder anything. Um, and like I said, this exact screen is the first link in the, in the description. Uh, that'll take you to my website where we sell the screen. Um, and yeah, it works great. That's the install complete. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.